Hey, Megan. Hi. So why do you think I asked you to come here, do this, record this? Um, I took a somewhat unconventional approach to getting my CPA. So it's just showing another option to your students of where they could go with their CPA. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's absolutely one of the reasons, um, mm -hmm. you know, and just so many other ones, as I'm sure we'll kind of dive in and twirl into this. Uh, <laughs> so a little bit backwards. Um, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing now? And you know, how'd you get there? So where are you, where are you living? Where are you working? What you doing? And uh, where in the process are you with the CPA program? And then we'll circle back to how you went through the CPA. For sure. So uh, I'm in Halifax at Deloitte as a senior tax analyst. I was recently promoted this Christmas. So that was exciting. <laughs> so, um, I passed the CPA or CFE um, a couple months ago and yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm just waiting to get my hours now. So Amazing. I think I have like nine or six more months or something. Wow. Um, and when did you graduate from Dal? Uh, May 2019. May 2019. So we were talking right before we pressed record about how um, Megan was part of like my first my first group, my first um, group of students that graduated. So um, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and oh, you no stayed way. in touch. You graduated. <laughs> and what did life look like after you graduated? Did you um, were there any vacations? Was there any education? What like May hits, you walk the stage and then what does it look like? Uh, so I dove right into, I fast tracked my C CPA. So I dove right into core one and core two uh, in the spring of 2019. And hold then- on, Hold on, you fast tracked your CPA without a GDIP program? Tell me a little bit more about that. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I didn't want to cram it all into one summer and I also wanted to go travel that summer. So I did a bit of research. It's not, um, CPA Atlantic has finally come out and said like, oh, look, we have this fast track option before it was kind of like swept under the rug or you had to really go looking for it. So I had talked to a few people from CPA um, and they sort of told me about it. So I was like, wow, this actually might be a better option for me. Um, so basically how that worked, I just had to have a call with the director to see if I was fit to do it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's basically how you would go about doing one module. You just do two at a time instead. So you started in May and you took core one and core two at the same time. And they say that, uh, each module takes 12 to 15 hours. Give me your honest assessment. Core one and core two, if you had to approximate, how many hours per week did you spend on each? Um, honestly, like Tammy's course, I'm assuming she's still teaching yeah. that yeah. one. Yeah, so she, like that helps us so much for core one. It sets us up for success, really. Like, totally. uh, so it was nice to have, like, I was pretty confident with core one. Um, core two, I struggled with, but, you know, I was able to take my attention off core one and put a lot of it on core two. Um, it was an adjustment, but it was totally doable and a lot less stressful in my opinion than doing it while working. Mm. Um, like, cause if you think of it 15 to 20 hours on a course plus a 40 hour work week is 60 hours. Whereas yeah. two courses at 15 to 20 hours is 35 to 40 hours. So it is less stressful and I, I believe I made the right decision going with that. So, totally. Yeah. So you took <laughs> core one and core two, May, June, wrote both exams. At that time, they were back to back. So one was, yeah. I think, like Wednesday and one was Thursday. Mm -hmm. And that would have been the first week of July. And then then what did life look like? Uh, then I jetted off to Europe for two months and traveled. And it was a blast. Uh, didn't think about CPA. It was wonderful. Uh, came back and I think it's, October, I started tax and audit at the same time as well. Um, yes. By the way, I yeah. loved the pictures that you sent me. I loved, <laughs> I loved yeah. seeing them. It was so good seeing you living your best life and traveling. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, 
Okay, so then you right. came back and when did that start? Was it, so you, you could have taken more modules at the end of July, but you chose not to because you wanted to travel. So you decided to travel. Yeah, like I could have, yeah. yeah, I could have had them all done uh, in the summer. So it's totally possible. Like if you have a September job offer to do them all before September, um, but I wanted to travel. So that's why I took that break. Totally. Made, you made the system work for you, which is mm -hmm. selfishly why I want, um, I wanted you to so many other reasons to, to speak because you were like, mm -hmm. okay, this is, these are what I want. This, these are the things I want to do. And it's not do CPA or travel or do this or do that. It's yeah. like, how do we do? And I want more. Yeah. And. <laughs> and I love that because so often we get stuck in this either or mentality instead of like figuring out, okay, how can I make this work? Mm -hmm. So I get the best of, you know, the situation that's tailored to me. So, okay. May, June, core one, core two, travel for two months, come back. And then the modules, correct me if I'm wrong. It would have started like the end of September or the, no, no, no. It would have been mid October. It would have been like yeah. October 15th or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then October 15th to like December 15th, you did tax and assurance at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, there, like I found audit, like pretty straightforward. Um, and even though I'm in tax, tax is just a challenging module. So I felt like yes. um, I was able to take my focus off of audit and put more of it on tax. And uh, that went really well. Um, I mean, the exams are hard, but like I passed them. So yeah. <laughs> it was it was fine. Um, and again, still wasn't working. I think that's probably one of the rules still with fast track is you can't work and do it at the same time. Yes, um, it varies per um, per region, yeah. uh, but it's, you know, yeah, very... I don't think Ontario actually cares, but Atlantic does. Yeah. Yeah. That's another fun thing. I switched back and forth from I was going to do full time in Toronto when I started, but I switched my offer to Halifax. So I was CPA Atlantic for core one, core two. And then I switched to CPA Ontario for tax and audit. And then I switched back to CPA Atlantic. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. I forgot about that. And this is even better yeah. that you're sharing this because so often, like we, although we say, okay, it's nationally developed, nationally developed, regionally delivered, uh, mm -hmm. and the modules are interchangeable. It's just nice to see a human <laughs> that did yeah. do that and can speak to it. So and, doable. Yeah. <laughs> was it, I, yeah. I don't know the answer to this. Was it, like really difficult or like what was the process like no cpa atlantic is oh. awesome cpa ontario is like they're not they're, they're not bad they're just a, yeah. a bigger region they're, so they're yeah, a little they're more bigger. difficult um to coordinate with but honestly like i just went straight to cpa atlantic both times and told them i either want to switch out or switch back and they handled the rest from there it was great pretty nice. easy process um so yeah, I had a bit of pushback actually because with CPA Atlantic, the ta taking tax and audit at the same time, it was like they had core one and core two, you could take those at the same time and that was officially like yeah. a process, but they didn't officially have tax and audit at the same time. They do now, I think, but I had to like push back and be like, no, I'm taking both, so. Yeah, I think that's a good point because uh, Atlantic, because it is a smaller, um region there are fewer like they don't always offer all the modules at one time so mm -hmm. you really have to take ownership of your studies and take a peek at the schedule and see mm -hmm. okay is everything being offered at the same time is it not is this possible you know where am i living how does this work into all of this mm -hmm. because you could have taken like in theory um core one and core two fast tracked and then you could have you know, still traveled and done the modules, done one and just come back for your exam um, and then started work with one module. So, you know, there could have been other alternatives mm -hmm. if fast tracking the electives wasn't an option. Yeah. Um, so there's still ways to kind of get that best of all worlds. Although one would say that it's definitely better to be traveling without having to do a uh, CPA. Um, but yeah. other people might be like, I think I can do core one and core two because it's, you know, entry level knowledge. It's a lot of, you know, what we've seen mm -hmm. before at Dell, but, you know, maybe the electives, they really are, you know, concerned with tax or they're really concerned with audit, or perhaps they're going to be an industry and taking, you know, finance or PM and they just want that more time. So it's really one of those, you do you. And what I, what I really value about you, Megan, um, from the get-go is, you know, you and you know your strengths and you, um, you don't, 
it's not, I, I don't want this to come off bad because I think this is one of your best qualities, but you, you know what works for you and you are willing to put in the work and the communication to make that work. And I think mm -hmm. that that is just fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you, wait, you wrote and passed assurance and taxation on back-to-back -back days. Yeah. Yeah. That was awful. It was, a. Uh... <laughs> It was a long two days. <laughs> yes. I made it work. <laughs> you did make it work. And right now, the exam schedule, because of you know COVID and because of this, they've actually um, spread out the exams more. So they're not necessarily back-to-back -back days always. And core mm -hmm. one and core two are actually like a week apart right now. So. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's even more kind of conducive um, mm -hmm. now in this environment versus um, versus that way. Um, and it's just because when they do in-person exams, uh, they have to, you know, double up on the centers. Like it's it's really mm -hmm. expensive and like logistically speaking, really difficult to run um, multiple days. But online, like without the logistic cha challenges, they're able to kind of spread out a bit more. So nice. who knows? Yeah, who knows if that's going to be a trend that continues or something that reverts back. Um, once we are in person, but I think, you know, all we can do is plan with the best information we have available and you've proven that you can write back to back and be successful. Mm -hmm. Um, was your workload significantly like your fast track in core one and core two, and then you fast track assurance and taxation at the same time. How was the workload comparative? Um, I can get even though, honestly. Um, because like I had a really, um, big struggle with core two, I, I would seriously did not think I'd pass that exam. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, uh, I think it evened out because I focused so much time on tax, like probably the same amount of time I focused on core two and then core one and audit sort of evened out there. So similar. I always hate asking questions when I don't know the answer, but here's one, because we started working together in the fall of 20, 2018. So we wouldn't have done um, cost accounting together. So my first year was the group that graduated in 2020, just last year, that would have done cost in IFA two and IFA or an AA two with me. Um, so I've included um, some like wrap ups and reflections uh, as well as like mini cases as well as, um, oh my gosh, capital budgeting, transfer pricing, and there's a few other, like more like EBC costing. You're nodding mm -hmm. your head. Uh, was that a good move? Or is, are those things that you saw a lot in court too? Or is that, is it? Um, yeah. What are, what are your suggestions? Like, tell me how, um, as somebody who struggled with court too, what are things that I should be thinking of if I haven't already? Um, I think it was just like so far from cost accounting, like, the course itself, I'd taken it like a year and a half ago. So I don't know. I, I if I don't apply my knowledge um, consistently, I, I just lose it. I, I don't have a good memory. So no, I, I can relate to that. Um, I will also tell you that um, the students right now in AA1 have been doing some case writing with uh, cost accounting principles. Yeah, that's great. I would say mainly. Um, mainly doing that it is the i found the multiple choice the most challenging which i know they're not doing right now because it's online yeah. and if they i would totally recommend they keep doing that because the multiple choice is i i found the cases you could pretty much figure out what they wanted based on you know wording and stuff like that yeah but uh the multiple choice was i found nearly impossible <laughs> yeah um do you think that that was bit of the format, a bit of like just a, a, a perfect combination storm of like MCQs being a little bit more challenging in the sense that there's often a few attractive answers combined with um, not necessarily having touched the material recently uh, or practice maybe with the MCQ version or. Oh, we're a little. Yeah, so I found um, the MCQs were difficult for a few different reasons. Um, you're expected to answer all these questions in a short amount of time. Um, and just with that added stress, I like found myself a little manic maybe. 
but um, I found the calculations the hardest, like having to do those really quick calculations in multiple choice, uh, which is something I don't normally struggle with, but it was just trying to figure out what calculation to do in the multiple choice. So I just got to a point where if I saw a question where I had to calculate something, I'd just circle a number, circle a number that falls in the middle, like <laughs> that's what I went with. And I just tried to answer all the theoretical questions um, and focus on those. So um, did you flag anything so that if you had time at the end to come back to or I did, but I yeah. didn't have time. I didn't have time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because a number of students, um, because this is when you wrote, they had three quarters MCQs and one one quarter case. A mm -hmm. number of students in core two would actually not get to the case. And it's oh really, yeah, no. You can't like I how do I say this? We don't know with certainty if you can pass the module without writing the case, but I would be willing to bet everything <laughs> that you cannot pass the module if you don't start and like do a decent attempt at the case. So your strategy is like, okay, um, you have to kind of kill some of those perfectionist tendencies and say enough of enough. I need to, you know, game plan this and game plan that. So like, you know, kudos to you for having a strategy, owning it um, and doing enough of enough and coming out ahead, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you had school. We know how that happened um, up until December. So at December, you are like, what is it? Uh, seven, eight months past post graduation, and you completed four out of your six modules. Uh, then you start work in January. And then what does life look like? Are you doing capstone one right away, or what? Like, what does it all look like? Uh, so. Uh, no, I waited till the, that May to do capstone one, so May 2020, um, and mainly because it's busy season for tax, so, yes. um, but I mean, it was still busy season for tax until mid-July, so, <laughs> <laughs> didn't really make any difference, but. Extenuating circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was just trying to adjust to the new job and, you know, kill it there, so. And obviously yeah. it worked out because you yeah. got promoted like ridiculously early, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I just focused on work and then Capstone One came along. It wasn't that bad. Like I had a great group, thankfully. So I can't speak too much to the struggles with Capstone One because it, it went really well. When they say that there's no new technical knowledge, uh, that it's all entry level knowledge, did you find that was the case? Like, did it feel uh, like that? No, like it is just such a big case. It's a, like a 60 page case and trying to apply knowledge that you learned from doing five page cases is completely different. Thankfully, my group was very diverse. We had like people from tax, audit, finance. Um, so we were able to like just take on our strengths and do it that way. Um, so it made it a lot easier. Perfect. Mm -hmm. May, June, Capstone 1, uh, mid-July, like July 23rd um, to mid-September is Capstone 2. Tell me about mm -hmm. the Capstone 2 experience. Um, I was pretty burnt out. Like this past busy season with COVID and the tax deadlines being extended was really hard on me. Um, so I, my leave started July 15th. So I got two months off to study and I didn't study anything for the first two weeks. Like I did the bare minimum, handed in like the assignments, but I just knew if I started studying right off the bat, it was, I was going to be burnt out by yeah. mid August and not be able to study. So um, I took the two weeks, I went home, um, got to go back to Ontario and see my family. And that was a good reset, came back um, and started studying like August 1st. Um, I didn't overdo it. I had a schedule to like gives us a schedule on like when they think we should be doing cases, which is really helpful. Uh, I would definitely recommend that just trying to like track your progress. And yeah, I, I mean, I changed it a lot, but it was just nice to have a base. Yeah. Uh, the ones I struggled with the most was day one. It's, it's really hard to study for. It's really hard on the C fee. You just, you don't know what to expect you can't really study for it other than read the case. Um, 
Yeah, let's yeah. dive into that a little bit because this is where we bring in the situational analysis, which is like a really long assess a situation yeah. where um, it's the first time that, well, the first time you would have seen it in theory is in capstone one. Mm -hmm. And then they roll the case forward three to five to seven years. So all your practice cases are based off of this capstone one case that you worked in a group. But it's the same cast of characters, but it's a brand new case, fast forward some time in the future, and you need to do a situational analysis and then, which is a, a really long assessment situation, and then integrate that throughout your response. But, um, but how you do that varies from case to case and what enough feels like, and then also having your own assessment opportunities within each one of those cases. It's, yeah, like you mentioned, it's unlike anything you've seen before. Um, there's a few different practice items, but not, it's not like super robust and yeah, it's, and it's a lot, it's a big case. It's a, it's a four hour case. It's a four hour case. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, so that was the one day where of the CFE where I was like, if I failed the day, it was day one, because it's like so hard to try and assess on how you did, because like, if you just, you could have missed an issue and if, I've heard if you miss an issue, like it's pretty much no go for you. Yeah, there's the strategic and operational issues. And again, <laughs> like if we were to, you know, guess and make conjecture, it's you have four or five strategic issues and three or four operational issues. And if you miss a strategic issue, it's really hard mm -hmm. to recover for. And all the marking keys uh, in Capstone 2 reflect that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no. And like you said, how do you know? And then, what if you chose uh, an item to be operational? What if it was strategic? And you know, mm -hmm. um, and it's the second guessing because when I sit down and get, if I were to give you a list, um, even one that's on your CV, uh, and say pick out strategic versus operational, guaranteed, like a hundred ninety nine times out of a hundred, like you would get it. But it's the time pressure. It's the unknowing. It's knowing that you know the if you. <laughs> if you choose wrong in your first like 20 or 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes of planning, like the rest of your case. And then um, the, in, the intense thing after this is you write day one and then you go on and have to write two more days with that kind of floating in your mind. So how did you do that? How did you mentally prepare to go into day two and day three? Um, I'm really good at like compartmentalizing. Uh, so, I mean, I can easily put something behind me and just focus on the task at hand especially when it comes to exam writing. Um, but that's that's just one of my strengths. I know that's very hard for some people, totally understandable, but yeah, it's just something I've always, like since university, been pretty good at. For somebody that isn't, are there any tips or anything that perhaps you've seen your friends do to kind of help? I don't know, for myself, sometimes I schedule time to worry about something in the future. I was like, hey, it's there. I, I won't forget to worry about it. <laughs> And then I'll see it in my calendar and I'll literally laugh. I was like, okay, yeah, you, you space head. Like, yeah. it's time to worry about it now. I'm like, well, I'm not worried anymore. And yeah. those are like little mental tricks. Do you have anything that perhaps you've seen your friends do or any advice that perhaps you um, do? Like definitely don't look at study material in between the CV. Do not like your brain's dead. It's not going to absorb any information. <laughs> You're not going to learn anything that you haven't learned in the past two months. <laughs> past two months or past like two and a half, three yeah, more years, exactly. like it's in there, even though you say it's not, you know, like if push comes to stuff, you have to like pull something out, like it's in there. Yeah. Um, did you talk to anybody in between the days? Um, thankfully, I didn't know a lot of people that were, well, I mean, we all wrote the same day one case, but when it came to day two, I didn't know a lot of people writing tax, almost everyone else was writing audit. So I could talk to people and it wasn't like, we were comparing but other than that no like we we kind of made a pact within our little study group that we're not talking about this we could say it's hard or we could say that sucked but we we're not going to talk about our answers um i would like recommend not hanging out with people you wrote the exam with afterwards until like the third day yeah and don't look on reddit don't do it no no, no. <laughs> people love to run to Reddit, especially day one. I did look. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you um, talked about day two that it was uh, a little bit different for you. So I do want to highlight this because some people think, and this is very common, um, that if you're in a firm, you need to write an assurance because you need to 
in order to be a licensure, you need to mm -hmm. um, do tax and insurance for the electives, which you did, but then you have to write in day two uh, in assurance. And then you also have to show um, uh, elective level depth and financial reporting is kind of that other like little layer, um, which you don't have to worry about till you get to capstone two before you start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you're in a firm and you did tax and insurance to your electives, but you wrote in day two tax elective, not assurance. Tell me a bit about that and how that fits in with your overall goals. Um, yeah, I don't see myself going into audit, so it wasn't really a second thought for me. Um, and I'm in tax, so it just made sense for me to write in tax. Um, people thought I was crazy, honestly, to write in tax because apparently, like, it's supposed to be really like difficult. Tax is complex. There's lots of rules and um, like. They, they give you the income tax act to look at, but who's referring to that in the middle of the TV? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's too much true. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. No, and um, this is going to sound like I'm reinforcing the obvious, Megan, but trust me, um, and I think you know this too, that a lot of things that are obvious to us, having gone through it, or you you know, we talk about your strengths and, you know, maybe I'll poke you for a weakness or two in a little bit. I don't know, just to like balance you out. Um, but you said something so, so simple, but it's not easy. You said, well, I work in tax. Uh, so I'm going to write in tax and the amount of times, like I would literally, um, I would be a millionaire if, if I got a dollar for when people are like, Hey, what role do you think I should do? Um, and I was like, I'm like, well, do you work in finance? And they're like, no, I'm like, do you work in tax? And they're like, no. And I was like, do you work in audit? And they're like, no. And I was like, okay. Um, like, what do you do? And they're like, well, I'm in industry. Um, I do account analysis. I do, you know, this and this, I do budget and do forecasting. I was like, oh, PM. And they're like, oh, but all my friends are writing an assurance and I should write an assurance. Why? Why the heck would you write insurance? Well, what if I want to like be an auto partner or sign up on financials? I was like, get your CPA, go through all those hoops because there's so many other hoops that you need to go through to do things just in case you might want to do them later. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a dangerous game too, um, but there's a lot of well-intentioned advice out there. So the fact that you heard it when you work in tax, you work, you know, in a, <laughs> like you work in tax and people were like telling you that you were silly. So um, was it, how did you tune them out and, and, you know, play your own game? It was honestly stressful. It's not helpful when people were like, oh, wow, you're writing in tax, good for you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I came out of day two feeling great. I, I was really happy with it. And I heard, not to like scare anyone away from taking the, the audit exam for your CP, it's you know, if you're in audit, go for it. But I've heard that it's a lot of writing. Like yeah. you have to be a fast typer. And whereas tax is, you know, analyzing the issue, doing the calculation, yeah. they give you a bit more time to think about it. Um, yeah. I found at least. So uh, instead of like my, the impression I got was you're pretty much like typing the entire time. Like if you take your hands away from the keyboard, it's. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, well, I mean, there's only so many calculations that you can do in audit, right? Yeah. There's yeah. The, the tying in of uh, misstatements. There's the normalizing. If there's some materiality, mm -hmm. maybe you have performance materiality. Maybe you have specific materiality. But there's there's also all those words that have to accompany like supporting those uh, those items. So for anybody who's curious, um, they do publish the uh, board of evaluators report every year, which has each case of the CV. And they have uh, kind of like a sample like solution or like, so just take them out and read them and be like, can I type that much? Even if I knew, if I knew everything, my technical was up to date um, on assurance, can I type that much? Or, you know, or if look at tax, can I, do I have, can I build my competencies to a part where I can analyze like that? Same thing with finance, same thing with PM, like go take a peek and then decide for yourself. But I find it's always interesting that, um, because the people that were like, oh, good for you. Were they people who had passed the CV or were they people that were writing with you? Oh, no, they were also writing. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. these are people that, you know, know 
relatively the same as you. They're the same mm -hmm. level. Um, I found when I went through the program and then I found when I was you know, teaching Capstone 2 a lot back in Calgary, that we had these student experts and they were the people that were like, no, 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 you should do it like this. I was like, oh, oh. this is interesting. <laughs> and, oh, no. Yeah, we try to find control, right? And yeah. if you do, if, if I'm a student and I'm giving advice and I feel like, okay, it validates my own approach. It's, you know, this makes me feel better, but it can be, you know, damaging. So thank you for telling me that as, as, as strong as you are in your convictions and as much as you bet on yourself, that it's still unnerving because you're like, oh crap, like what's going on here? There was definitely doubt. And I, I did consider like, oh, should I write on it? Like maybe it is, I don't want to say easier because CP is hard no matter what, but um, maybe it is like a better path and, you know, maybe it does open these other opportunities for me, but I'm glad I did not listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have somebody, so Bryce, um, well, you know Bryce. Yeah. Uh, so he wrote at the same time as you did and perhaps I'll get him on here. So we won't spill too, too much, but he didn't write an assurance and he heard a lot of the same feedback and um, you know, it's not, it's not easy. So anyways, kudos to you. Okay. Um, so you did Capstone 1, did Capstone 2. Um, when did you get back from work? So you wrote this CP mid-September. Um, did you go back that following Monday? Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> COVID, I, I know I was, I had a cruise booked right after my CP and like, I was going to go with my mom and it was going to be so fun, but yeah, COVID kind of canceled that. So, um, just right back to work. To be, to be continued with the cruise, right? Yeah. It'll be yeah. something nice to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, okay. So that was like the deepest, thoroughest dive um, into that. But I thought it was so important because we could talk about the modules, you know, the mm -hmm. fact that there was an IP and a PC each week and the MCQs and the readings, but that you still found it super manageable and doable. I'd like to circle back now. Um, what do I want to circle back to? Um, so you're waiting for your months to come up. Where, how, how do you use accounting? How do you use tax um, in your current gig? I know you work in tax, but just, just spell it out for us because it might be some stuff like that's not intuitive. Yeah, so um, I have to understand like accounting for book purposes and accounting for tax purposes really well because I have to understand how things are um, booked like on the, like in the client's journal entries basically and trial balance to understand like how it needs to be reversed for tax purposes because there's a lot of items that need to be reversed <laughs> and then look differently for tax so I mean I do use it every day um sort of like an uncommon use I I do a lot of journal entries I was honestly surprised by that like oh. uh, for our tax planning we provide like the journal entries to the client that needs to be done if they go ahead with our tax planning so I have to understand like a lot there of you know sort of basic year one stuff yeah, yeah no thank you that's something I wouldn't in intuitively thought mm -hmm. um what future plans or options are you considering uh, keeping in mind that I will, I will be posting this. So if you are planning on writing the biggest, baddest firm email, <laughs> no. 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 Um, so I have like four job interviews set up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right now, my plan is to stay. Like I said, I just got promoted, so things are going well. I have such a great team here, and. Um, we've actually had a lot of turnover this year. We had a couple of not on like the junior level, but we had a couple of managers um, leave. Some was planned, some wasn't. Um, and uh, you know, Shauna, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he's coming on in September. And yeah, we know Shauna. Hi, Shauna. Hi, Shauna. <laughs> She's actually in the office today. <laughs> She's um, like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, we're going axe throwing tonight as a little tax nice. event. It's going to be nice. fun. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, we just have such a great team here. We had a new partner as well. And he, um, he's bringing in like a really nice uh, leadership style for us. Uh, so for the foreseeable future, I'll be here. I thought I would be switching over to industry uh, like sooner, but 
with things going so well, I don't really see a need to. Um, I'm getting tons of growth opportunities right now. Uh, Atlantic just started and then Mirror Board is something that uh, mirrors the leadership team of Atlantic. So um, we have sort of a junior staff assigned to each member of the leadership board. So I mirror the Atlantic tax partner and it's like a group of 20 of us. And I think it's up to senior manager level can be on it, but I think most of us are either senior, junior, senior analysts or uh, managers. So yeah, it's a really great opportunity. I'm also on something called the Millennial Magnets Board, uh, which is a national board with Deloitte of a bunch of millennials. And we meet with, um, uh, I think our, yeah, our CEO. <laughs> Nice. How did you qualify to be a millennial? Aren't you too young? I, yeah, you I think so. I don't know how I got on this. <laughs> it was a mature, mature yeah. disposition. Um, nice. So yeah, we. I've just gotten lots of opportunity for growth and leadership. Um, so it's really exciting. And yeah, that's the future. I think, the future. I think what you said by saying, "Hey, I thought I'd be in industry," or "I thought this," but being open to, you know, working hard, working hard for where you're at and then assessing and saying, Hey, Oh, wow. Like this is what's here. Why would I leave this? Just because maybe I thought life would go a certain way. If anything, COVID's taught us to, you know, um, to live in the moment and see, mm -hmm. see where we're at and yeah, doing something just because you thought you were going to do it before. Like don't pigeonhole yourself there. Yeah, no, I'll, all through university. I I thought I had this plan. I was going to work full time in Toronto and live the life there and things changed and it's been for the better, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, you sound happy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, what advice would you have for current Dal accounting majors? So third and fourth accounting majors. Uh, pretty much what we just mentioned, like you can go in with a plan and that's totally okay, but just be flexible. And I'm sure like you guys have learned that through um, COVID and stuff because a lot of plans got turned on their heads, but yeah, um, just be flexible and take opportunities that come and yeah. They are a resilient group. And I know that's a little bit of an at times overplayed sentiment, um, mm -hmm. but they are. Um, so speaking to the third year right now that I'm teaching cost, um, they are, they problem solve, they co collaborate and communicate with one another, they email to clarify, they research, they, you know, they're proactive. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of what um, I used to see in like later kind of mid CPA students in PEP. I'm seeing a lot with in that with them now because they need to take mm -hmm. on that ownership. You, um, you can't necessarily just go to class. You need to you know, you need to really source out that information. Um, yeah. And our fourth years, you know, talk about being able to, to have a picture of what, you know, ending third year, what going to fourth year would look like. Um, you know, I, we try not to sugarcoat anything, but a fourth year accounting is hard. Oh yeah. And it's, it's not that it's online that it's hard. It's just hard. And then to put it online, is hard. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, you're you're giving really great advice uh, to a really dedicated uh, group of people that mm -hmm. yeah, are just they're warriors. Yeah. Megan, definition of success. I wouldn't be me if I didn't ask this because it's I so know. unique. And I, <laughs> I remember I didn't you used to put this on exams and stuff. Do you still? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I mix things up. Um, in the online format. I, I definitely, um, exam time is, we have fewer and further, and so I need to adapt. Um, but I do, um, things that I incorporated this year was to take things like the, um, the, those little items on exams and incorporate them into the wrap-ups and to get mm -hmm. some, um, to really get kind of that thinking, um, that process, you know, what, what does this mean to me? That's cool that that's what that means to other people, but what does this mean to me? And how does this content um, synthesize with me? And more in the wrap up. So having the learning be more continuous throughout mm -hmm. in little pieces versus like bigger chunks. 
Um, so yeah, I, I like to think I still um, incorporate, and I've definitely made a, a really large effort to incorporate a, what we've done and what we did in fourth year, but just uh, tailor it in little ways um, for the online platform. Good. So yeah, what's your definition, Megan? Uh, so I mean, if you ask me, like pretty much up until second year university, I was like, oh, I want a high paying job and I want to be the top of what I do. And I mean, that's still somewhat a part of me, but it's just a part of me now. It's not all of me. I, um, I definitely am much more fulfilled by who I surround myself with. And um, that is pretty much the definition of my success. Like, uh, surround myself with the right people, people who empower me and lift me up. Um, and then I can do the same in return. So uh, definition of success is just being happy and, you know, satisfied in my life. And um, I mean, there's financial security there as well, but it's definitely looped in there. But um, yeah, mainly just surrounding yourself with the right people. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> comments anything else to add um on, like I guess another piece of advice I have is like advocate for your coworkers and um people below you as well I found that really fulfilling in the past year uh just talking to people talking to people about mental health and uh, checking in with my coworkers, having meaningful conversations and relaying it to um, a partner or someone who could possibly make a change there. Uh, it's great when you can lift your team up and support each other. And it, yeah, so just going into a job, um, you know, try and take on that role of a voice within your team. I can't think of any other perfect way to end this. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> no worries. Thank you.